Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to discuss which is better, testosterone enanthate versus cypionate. And in this video I'm going to do a brief discussion of the esters or types of esters after this. Um, so I'm Dr. Downey and thank you for joining me. Um, so let's get right into it. So is there a difference between the two? Um, Besides the esters, no, and that the esters are the end part of the name, the enanthate, the cypionate. So the weights of the esters are essentially identical, except I think there's one more carbon in the uh, cypionate um, uh, ester, which makes the uh, which means that. Uh, the enanth testosterone injecting testosterone and then take gives you a benefit of like less than one percent. The half life of both of them, um, especially the terminal half life, or which is the biologically active half life, is identical. Um, the only difference from what I could pick up through people's experiences with the different. Uh, testosterones is that some people experience more injection pain with cypionate than enanthate and that possibly could be due to the higher boiling point of cypionate. So in conclusion there's no difference between the two. So let's move on to different esters. Does it matter which ester you use um, the, 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 the quick answer to that is no, not really. Um, it does, the only time it does matter is whether or not you want to inject more frequently, but as you'll see by my previous video, you should inject frequently even if the ester is longer. Um, and you can find that with the reasons why in my uh, previous video. So what is the point of putting these esters onto testosterone? Well, if you were to inject, you do get testosterone no ester or testosterone suspension, which if you inject immediately gets absorbed and peaks within your blood within like an hour, the half-life is an hour. And the point of these esters is to extend that half-life so that they're in the body a lot longer. And this means that your it was essentially created so that injection frequency doesn't have to, uh, so that you the injection frequency is much less. Furthermore, the reason testosterone suspension is uh, picked up so quickly is because it's water soluble, so that has a preference in um, being picked up by the circulation. And um, by adding an ester, you make this more fat soluble, which means it's slowly absorbed by the system, by your system. So essentially after you inject testosterone, it leaves like a bit of a deposit and over time it slowly absorbs into your system. So once it's absorbed into the system, it will be, um, let's say, testosterone enanthate or cypionate circulating within the system. Now there are enzymes in your body that breaks down these esters in order to activate the testosterone. And this itself also takes a while, and that hence why um, if you add in a longer ester, the longest one of the longest esters being like a decanoate, it slowly releases in the body and takes much longer to reach peak effect, which is different from testosterone suspension because the testosterone is already free and can bind to the receptors. So does one ester bind st more strongly to the receptor than another? No, not at all, because it's not about the ester at all. Uh, when uh, testosterone has an ester on it, like an enanthate or a cypionate, it's not active. It can't bind to the receptor. It's after those esters are removed that it can bind to uh, a receptor and elicit an effect. Now that we've dis uh, shown that esters, certain esters doesn't, don't make, let's say, testosterone more potent than another, 
we the only time it does matter is when taking let's say a steroid let's say a vial of 250 milligrams of testosterone and anthate for uh, a per mil versus a vial of 250 milligrams of test prop in a, a, a vial. Now, as you'll see, the enanthate ester weighs a, uh, weighs more than the testosterone propionate ester. So that means in 250 milligrams of testosterone propionate, since the testosterone propionate is lighter, you get more testosterone propionates per milligram than you do with testosterone enanthate. So technically the testosterone propionate would be, you'd get more per milligram of testosterone propionate. So this is where um, the testosterone enanthate versus cypionate argument came about, but there's literally almost no difference between the weight of the two. So it is almost negligible. So I hope you enjoyed uh, learning a bit about esters. If you want to learn about the half-life and the terminal half-life of the esters, I'd suggest you just look them up. They're easily accessible. These numbers aren't, are rarely cited, but they're more or less correct uh, in terms of how long the um, esters or testosterone last in your body. But I hope, hope you learned something. And again, no, testosterone and anthate is not better than cypionate and vice versa. Um, so I'll see you in the next video. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Cheers.